amazing with the background and everything. Oh, what? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. If you go into Zoom, I don't know if you're, your, uh, if you're in your computer or not, go into Zoom, go top right into their settings and then click and there's virtual background. You can click um, on that and then they got, they're sort of playing with virtual background, so. Amazing, amazing, it's great. I, I, can't, I, I can't access it right now, I don't think, but I will check it out, it's very cool. So, I'm here with Jordan. And uh, Jordan, why don't you give me a quick appraisal of what you think is happening on the planet right now? Wow, I think we're in we're in reset. I think that um, whether by nature or Earth or humanity's like greater intelligence all combined, we just we need to take time to stop to stop running with our heads down and to actually take a break and to take a breather and to to just sit and breathe and just stop work for a moment so that we can actually tend to our world and our reality and the life that we're creating and reassess our priorities and and um you know discover what our, our our intentions are what we're living for i think this is the perfect opportunity to do that i think we're set up right perfect to recalibrate for a better life and a better better community system, community support in, in many different ways. I mean, we, we almost couldn't ask for this to happen in such a strong way. I mean, if you want to reset, I mean, it's, I mean, everything is stopping, right? And we couldn't have created that, but it's there. And to me, in great crisis, there's great opportunity. So it just seems that for the work that we're doing, if we want to come in with something new, that uh, this time is probably a pretty good time to, to do it. Because everyone's at home, you know, on these computers now, and everyone yeah. has this, this Zoom, and we can start to talk to one another maybe a little bit differently than before. Definitely. Yeah, I feel like this is the perfect opportunity for everybody to just Beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful gift to have a reset like this. How many opportunities do you have when the world all stops and there's a chance to to communicate something new, to, to come together, to... Okay, I'm really excited to create rhythm and and chordal structures that are identifiable by astrological signs and astrological expressions. And so you can relate maybe like this would be a uh, a flowing expression of Pisces with a staccato expression of Aquarius. And then a staccato expression of Sag and Aquarius next to each other, held held flowing with, with flowing Pisces. So being able to create music that's actually synced to the to astrology, basically. It's kind of I feels like there's like a solar calendar and I'm able to take spots of time and put them next to each other and understand the geometry and how it fits together through the resonance of sound, of the vibrations next to each other. Nice. So me, like a musical calendar, a musical interpretation of, of uh, like events on a calendar. Fantastic. And so what about the five rhythms you were adding in? So yeah, the five rhythms are, are so, so flowing. So just straight like flowing. And this is the birth. Birth is coming in flowing. And then we're moving into staccato. So more like, well, more, um, it's kind of the, the childhood into like the preteen years. And it's more, got more like, you know, how staccato would be. 
And then chaos is just like this wild energy, wild all over the like fire, just, and then lyrical comes into, it's similar to flowing, but has more of like a, a guided, like its own guidance to it. And then stillness comes into um, a, you know, very slow motions and very just, yeah acknowledging the field and just and, and a lot of acceptance and so with basically syncing that to monday through friday okay so what i i have a magical map here i want to share with you to see oh, if it ties into what you're talking about can you see it nope You were sharing the screen earlier, though. I did see yeah. your screen earlier. I've got a good vantage of Earth from this point of view. How about this? There. OK. Can you see that? Yep. Time stream. OK. So I mean, you've seen something similar. I think, have you seen this before? Yeah, I've been, I've been rocking with this for a while. Okay, but this is sort of like the simplest map to show the time translation. Um, anyway, I, I don't know if I showed you this specifically, but I guess things like it, right? Anyway, I have this now that I can send to you. And I'm just wondering if you can kind of make a, your own analysis or feedback around what you see and perhaps how you could use it. Mm. Well. The word cycle is really important because those each each domain here moves in in a, in a cyclic fashion over you know minute to minute to minute to hour to hour to hour and day and day to day to day, and so you, it allows you to be able to sync like program basically program how you want to interpret your relationship with reality through these different time domains. So like minute to minute, what are you checking? What, how do you want to embody your, um, how do you want to embody yourself to experience reality minute to minute? How do you want to embody yourself hourly to hourly? Or you, you can program them with activities or check-ins and just basically creating, for me, I want to create a tone in each category. So when I, when I listen or lean into one of those domains, I can, I, I can reset into a tone that I've programmed to myself. So I, rem, I can recall what my life, like what, what I'm intending my life to be as the entire lifespan of that, that I'm experiencing. I can lean into the intention and just, and, and reset into that. And I can go into the minute, oh, minute, this is how I feel empowered in this moment. And it, you can even have multiples to, to multiple um, different programs, basically, to, to sync up to each domain. So now if we all shared this map, planetary guardians and those who want to use it, uh, how would that be good in terms of synchronizing meetings? and link that into the 28 day cycle, the lunar cycle. Can I ask the question one more time? Okay. Um, one of the main goals I think of Planetary Guardians is being able to synchronize people into the group space and synchronize people into the community space and synchronize people into the one-on-one -on -one space. Absolutely. And synchronize people into the personal space. Synchronize people into the sacred space, the five spaces. If you want the community together, you have to do things to get the whole community to come together. And the same thing with groups like this online, you have to plan and schedule. That's one of the main things of time. And so you're working on the beginning of a 28 day cycle, right? You've been doing the seven step pulse through the seven mm -hmm. cycle. And now we're at some point gonna to come together on the four of those and syncing that up. I guess I'm just, I'm just trying to, to show how we can synchronize in larger and larger numbers of people if we use the same reference point in time. <laughs> so, 
So I guess there isn't really a question in there. It's just... Yeah, no, it's a great exploration, absolutely. Um, so let me show you something else. Let me just... Uh... Okay, let me... Okay. So now, ooh, interesting. Okay, cool. Mm. We are. The map disappeared. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay, yeah, I see it. Okay, so now with that map as a foundation, it's, it's, it's like the basement of a building that you always know that these nine cycles are in those spots. And then one of the ideas is to come up with algorithms or programs or processes that have specific languaging or things in each sort of uh, cycle that's appropriate that's connected because if you're looking at the present moment, whatever you're doing in the present moment might be very different from what you're doing over a period of a whole year. Mm. So if you're looking at a whole year, you want to have something that is appropriate for that versus the present moment, which is, you know, now, 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 now. So the idea is that we have in our lifetime cycle, we have remedies, we're creating remedies that councils have identified. And so these councils are looking to solve the problems of the world. And then they organize and share knowledge communities, which are like a replacement to the corporation for an economic structure that actually is focused on the remedy first, not on making money. So we're gonna change the, the focal point towards actually doing good things for the species as the focus, rather just on profiting some fat cats or some people that money and so the corporation is structured for that and in the shared knowledge communities you have product teams that are linked to these remedies and these product teams are broken down into people who have schedules and then there's a dream space mm -hmm. office and that's kind of like what we had uh, at uh, that place we got kicked out of yeah bit of a dream space office, right? But you, we, like it, everything's going to be more and more virtual. But we need a physical space to come together, and that's the dream space. And so every community on the planet at some point are going to have dream space, not community centers, because the community centers are sort of like very government, very corporate, very restricted in terms of the amount of creativity that can take place in there. We need a new kind of building. We need a new kind of space to bring people, the youngers and the elders together to, to create new things and to share knowledge. And that's on a daily basis, but on an hourly basis is like what we're in right now, a Zoom session. And so we're looking at creating online education through Zoom or any type of video conferencing software. And that's like in terms of hours, and that's fitting into the lunar schedule of what we're doing. We're either meeting offline in the dream space or online through video conferencing. And then the minute to minute is the website. This is where customers or the public or the people are coming to each of our websites and the website of the shared knowledge community and the websites of the product teams and that's the input into the sessions because the sessions from the public to us are paid they're paying us to, to learn how to think different and be different and then in the present moment are all the online campaigns that are bringing people to the website that are getting the zoom sessions that uh, are facilitated through our dream space through the schedules of the people on the product teams that we're doing mm -hmm. in the shared knowledge community focuses on the remedies created by the councils and then the councils are dictating what online campaigns are going to work or not work hopefully so what are your thoughts on this right now i'm really intrigued with the back and forth how the, th the things are kind of like in uh in number sequential order, in clockwise fashion, it's creating 
and in reverse, it's feeding. So the product teams are kind of birthed from the shared knowledge community and the schedules are birthed from the product teams. I mean, I think like, I don't know if I have anything to add, but I do, I just, I think it's essential to, to look at it this way. I think it's the only way to keep, there's so much information arriving now. I think the only way to sort it properly is to understand it in different time cycles. You can't like, we need to, instead of just like a block and say, this is your life to be able to divide it in and to, to delegate to different time cycles, different, um, different functions or different responsibilities, I think is, is incredibly essential. And also it gives us a framework to have a conversation about, about how we're interpreting a, a given time cycle. Like right now, I don't know if you can see this on the wall. Um, can I see like there? So that <laughs> it's kind of dissolving in, in the stupid background <laughs> kind of limits things, but um, it's basically there's it's a nine by nine grid, and it's ninety one year eighty one years, and then the people I have an active relationship with currently are on there by their age, so I start to see everyone in, in the potential shared knowledge community, and then starting to see okay who's where and what age they are because in terms of a lifetime age is dictating where you are. Like you and I are very different points in our life, um, but we're still communicating, we're still interacting. Uh, I'm gonna talk to someone my own age differently than I'm gonna talk to you, but it mm -hmm. really depends upon you know, who the person is and how they think. And sometimes younger and older people think a lot closer than other people who might be our own age. But it's like getting the full spectrum of people, getting an understanding that, okay, here are the people in the lifetime, and then the years are being broken down, the seasons, all these other things are happening in relationship to those people. Until you get down to the, like this, a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour conversation. So the idea being that we do have a whole system that's organizing everything together. Totally, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you come at you come at it from from a, such a business point of view, and I think that's where because like, I'm coming at it from a musical point of view, and I'm seeing people and people's passion and their activities as music, and and the music and because I, I want to be a media artist, so creating video, creating like visual and audio kind of like um, cultures identifying cultures through through media and so for me i'm seeing like i'm standing in the center point and i'm leaning into each side and each side is directing me to stay balanced in its own way it has it's been delegated its own responsibilities it's in charge of of keeping me balanced in in one fashion or another and i'm also creating basically my perfect life through um, through through anchoring what my dream reality is and I have these nine slots to be able to to anchor different ways of, of perceiving myself and my reality and I'm doing it in a very musical way and in that way I have this flow and I'm flowing between the different cycles and they, they catch each other so beautifully it's how how they're interacting with each other is what really lights me up it's like each piece is so is so beautiful and quaint and perfect and can be be created and illustrated so beautifully to represent an aspect of yourself but ultimately it's how all the aspects intertwine and how you interact with them how you transition from one cycle to another is like it's it's an, a, a divine practice of grace 
and and you're moving between ways of interpreting time and you're also it's and it's just uh, a fractal of how you're moving between communities in 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 the community spaces going seamlessly from one-on-one -on -one to personal space to group to community and really checking in and, and making the most of your interaction with all those spaces and you can do that because you're aware of a of an entire balance of of your life of what you need all your needs are being met and you can see that because you're constantly cycling through you're constantly checking in with each point with each with each in in every category of time are you showing up for yourself in the way that you most want to in the way that's most nourishing for yourself and after you set the intentions after you really get clear on your priorities and sync intentions to all those points of how you want to experience those points then it's just about letting them guide you into the dance of your life but every step you take you're just stepping into more of what you love because you're creating your your most dream reality and so for me it's very musical i i, I hear it i feel it i taste it it just washes over me oh i love that part of myself and then so maybe i'm in like the seasonal and then going into the daily and then going into hourly and going into minute by minute and going into timelessness and it's just this like gorgeous dance and i'm feeling like these these colors and waves like rushing over me of like how i most desire to interpret reality and interact with it but because there, there's so because i can delegate it to all these different to such a holistic model it it just catches me in every in every degree at every aspect it's like every time i'm feeling oh i i need something else i need something more like i'm not feeling met right now i can just lean into a new side and that new angle that new cycle will like reinvigorate me in this way and and if i feel like i am having a deficit of something i can just go through each each uh, each domain and i can see oh Here's where I'm having trouble. Here's where I'm not meeting myself. I don't feel like in, uh, in um, you could say, in lifetime. I don't feel like I'm meeting myself in lifetime. So number one, I'm feeling like um, out of sorts. I don't feel comfortable here. Now I know where to go to address resetting and recalibrating my intentions because I haven't met myself in this way to a degree that feels... Um, on par with my preference. Yes, beautifully spoken. Sorry, I just uh, had to adjust something. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Okay, yeah. No, that was yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that your musical perspective is is just beautiful, and uh, your own models are coming in in different ways and i think one of that's one of the main purposes of let's say a holistic thinking system is to be able to the models from people yeah there we go that's better am i, am I upside down yeah you're upside down <laughs> right oh, oh no i'm so oh, again. it just needed a moment well, to make sense every time that i talk you should just go upside down and say look i i, I don't understand you <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Well, it's funny uh, because I, I hear you. I hear all everything that you're saying, but I just can't really recite it back or or carry the conversation in the same kind of texture. I need a different palette to work on, but it's the same information. So it's it's quite interesting. And again, this is something that we can map with the with the new paradigm toolkit. This yeah. is something so that we you know, if you're framing a question. And I'm receiving that question and I'm like, there's no, like, my intelligence doesn't flow that way. I, I'm like, I have all this intelligence that I would love to share. I have very like appropriate opinions for it to be able to have this interaction. But if we can't see how we're each, how we're different in our communication style, you could set me up for, um, to answer a question that I'm not suited for. Where is it, it where is if you could understand me or if there was room for me to receive the information of where the conversation is going or what you're framing and then I could interpret it in my own way and give you the answer from my own lens, you know, shifting lenses is 
Yeah. Very, very powerful. For sure. And I, and I think that the sort of linear, flat conversations and the sort of traps that we find ourselves in when we don't have a multidimensional perspective that can move, uh, it, it gets pretty limiting and people don't really want to contribute because a lot of times their perspectives are not given, as you said, the right question or the right uh, groundwork to even begin the answer. And I've seen that with you where, you know, you have a totally different viewpoint and it's very valid. And in fact, it may be showing me and other people a totally new way of seeing something, but you haven't had the ground or the stage or the audience or the listening to really spend enough time to understand you. And I think part of what I'd like to, to get to in the school of unconscious communication is for you and other teachers or originators to gain that platform and find the students and find the people who are very attracted to what you're saying. And so this to me is part of that in terms of highlighting the people that I see as originators or teachers in the School of Unconscious Communication and to begin to share them or show them to the world in this form. Totally, absolutely. And yeah, the idea of, sorry, and the idea of certain maps of the inflow matrix being the foundational reference point which creates the new conversations and that creates the reference point for all the teachers and originators and facilitators and students and clients to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, like for me, I find this so often I am, I'm thinking about other people and I'm trying to enrich other people's lives and I'm trying to bring value and, and, and fit myself into these existing frameworks. And then, and then I realize at some point I'm exhausted and I hate what I'm doing. And I'm like, I'm not at home. I'm not in my heart. I'm not in my passion. I'm doing the things that I say that I love, but I hate it. It's awful. And I'm like, because I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for, for somebody else. I'm wanting so much to enrich somebody else's lives that I'm just sacrificing myself. And I think this is a common thing. And is, and I don't think the frameworks are like, I haven't found to be able to use the existing frameworks to be able to find comfort in excelling in my passion and also giving value. Mm. And, and I'm, I'm there like doing like, I set up, I set everything up to do the thing that I love and then I start doing it and then, and then it just sucks and everything like I can't move and I'm paralyzed and I feel awful. And it's, it's because I'm so focused on delivering value that I forget to live value. And it's not like you, like you can have your cake and eat it too. It's essential to have your cake and eat it too. You need to be able to have the thing and give it at the same time. It's not one or the other. It's not, it's not for yourself or for somebody else. It's for all of us collectively. And, and what we need most is spirits to be shining and passions to be lit and innovation to just be soaring. And, and we don't need to problem solve. We just need to like come alive because life has intelligence in it. And if we feel life, if we feel alive in our body, if we feel our hearts, our heart is going to pump and resonate with the intelligence that we need to structure our activities. Mm. Well, c could it be that again, that in the one-on-one -on -one space like this, um, your focus maybe, as you say, bring value to the other person or in the group space or in the community space where these patterns have evolved by being in school, by being in families, by being in these social arenas, right? Where again, the, the, the container or framework isn't really set up that great for real individual creativity. But in that personal space, I mean, that, that's what I found with this, like to finally get a boundary around where I can be selfish, or where I can just be me, where it's just me, nobody else. And because you know, as soon as someone else comes in your field, everything changes depending upon who that person is and are they supportive or non-supportive? Are they a good listener or not a good listener? Are they interested or not interested? And, you know, according to all these things, a different you is going to come out. 
depending upon how much you want to participate with that person as you or as any one of you or as you know in direct relationship to that person so i think for me the as you said bringing different tones or having a different self or having a different role or having a whole bunch of different roles or a whole bunch of different archetypes in each space that is doing different things that you can call upon, that you can shift into, that you can become the shapeshifter and sort of honor all the different sides to yourself that you have and not, you know, rigidly, here I am society, this is what you made me. Uh, so the idea of the maps is to free the mind and to, to open up the doors to self-design. And I think that's what you're doing, right? I mean, you're a lot of work into your own inner world and getting things calibrated and aligned for the right context and for the right sort of part of you that wants to express itself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how are the videos coming? Uh, the next step was for you to get the videos online and to send them over. I, you got them, didn't you? I haven't got them yet. Oh, they should be in your email. Okay. okay. In Dropbox. In Dropbox. Okay. Yeah. In my Gmail or my Zoho? Your Zoho. Okay. Yeah, I, I sent them over and uh, I'm going to get my own. I got $200 for my birthday. I'm going to give that to or basically have that for um, Premiere, Photoshop, and uh, and um, digital musical instruments, so I can have like orchestra at my fingertips. And so we're gonna, yeah, basically gonna have the ability to edit video, to do titles, and to make music. So everything that I need is kind of in those contained within those. Awesome, awesome. So now you can start working. And they just had like this saw this music software. I've been looking at it for like I, I, 10 years. Like I've been just like in awe of this thing. And, uh, and they just have this, uh, it's, it's so expensive, but they just released this um, without a contract, twenty nine ninety nine a month, 30 bucks a month for like basically everything in the whole kit. There's over like 15,000 instruments. And, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm super stoked to start with that. Wow. Um, can I show you a map? Can I show you how I've been using yeah. the Veeam map? So here's on the wall. This is the first thing that I did when I got home. So there we go. All right. There's your Veeam. There's how I'm interpreting the intentions of Alpha, Beta, Delta for each one of those segments. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There's right. the difference parts of the shows nice yeah totally so it's coming really well and so here you've got the basically like for three you've got the intention and um my archetypes for for um three which is beta mechanic alpha poet uh, ballerina for delta you have the show title and the host of the show which is lila and Emilio. Nice. And nice. also I took all the neat, like in this time, we're, we're having a lot of, um, in this time we're having a lot of, um, like I'm just thinking of all the schools, all the kids that are like out of school. And I'm like, and I feel like that now because I'm at home in my parents' basement. I'm living at here and I'm really isolated because I'm in this village. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> and it's so cold. You can't even go outside half the time. Um, so we put all next to all the values i put what i most need to to um sustain happiness wow that's beautiful man it really is physical activity intentional practice nutritional intake social engagement mental stimulation um and when i yeah i'm really it's so there we go it's so it's such an interesting balance because it's like like developing each side but then when i move it needs to be an interlace of all of those things 
you know, it's such an interesting, it's like, I do all the, each one, I define each one of the sides, but then when I move, it kind of needs to have all of them together. And sometimes I can I'll feature more than others, but it's really, yeah. It's really interesting how they relate. It looks very concise. It looks like you brought in your archetypes for the, your primary focus with the different aspect. Like it's, it's beautiful, man. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah. I did most of the boards last, uh, over Christmas. And so, yeah, I've got those. And then I got those other boards. Um, yeah. But I'm learning it through music. This is a good way to interpret because there's two signals in the Enneagram, right? There's the three, six, nine, and then there's the uh, two, four, one, seven, five, eight, right? And so they're both going at the same time. And I've been looking at how do I, how do I incorporate this? Like if you're looking at show structures, does the show go clockwise? One, two, three, four, five. Does it go counterclockwise? Does it go, like, do you actually use those patterns? Because creating with those patterns is very, very powerful. Um, what I've been doing with music is I take the, I get a lot into the astrology for this one. And I take, so chords, and I, I basically do how, like, interpret um, the 369 in a sequence of chords. So I have the rhythm and the tone of of how how the, how a musical section is going to flow, and then to, I overlay the melody over top that has the two to four to one, and so the three six nine lay down the foundation, and like hold space and give the give the tone, and then the other frequency basically paints the story. So it's like, like the book and then the story of the characters. Beautiful. So how long how long do you think you're going to be out in, out in Alberta? I haven't slightest. I am. I'm just. I'm just a. I'm just here now. Yeah. Um, does everyone in the village? Does anyone come out, or is it everyone locked in their homes? In the village. <laughs> there are some kids. There were two kids playing playing. Um, ball in the streets the other day. There's some people walking around. Um, yeah, when I came yesterday was uh, day before yesterday was really gorgeous, and so I went and, and sat with the horses outside because I'm like right at the edge of the country, right? So um, every there's horses all around me, and then uh, and now it snowed again, so it's chilly outside. Um, but uh. I'm thinking like could be like two and a half months. Um, yeah, I'm just be like, well, I mean, at least a month and a half. Um, and then I don't know where to go from there, but I'm, I'm looking at what I'm wanting to set up to create the show. And I'm actually in a really good place um, to start the show actually. Um, because like I can, I have all the countryside to run around in and it's getting warmer. Um, and if the show that I want to create is about life in the apocalypse, it's probably a good place to start the show. <laughs> and, and I'm already in like kind of quarantine isolation. So it kind of feels appropriate, but I really want to go get clear with like demographics and start creating content that's driven specifically for different demographics and get those create programs where those specific demographics can have a show channel to contribute content to to share their voice and stories and perspectives and art mm. and this basically be the start of decentralized content and so there's not going to be a show that owns any the artists own all their content and um and uh, well, more ownership is it's public domain, but they own like the royalties. So if the, if the show were to make money, anybody that contributes piece like art or perspectives or their own media to 
um, a project that made money, those people would get paid for it, like with that money. Mm. But I want to basically create a data a database of everyone's content, and everything is public domain, like free to use. And if you get paid, you if there's money coming into you, then you can pay the other people. Mm. But I don't think we should be limited in any way at this time to um, say I can't use your content and until you, like unless I pay. I don't think that should be the structure. Yeah. Well, I think if you just, you know, get the agreements of artists who want to participate in that, right? I mean, I think we should start with the people we know mm -hmm. and uh, all the people who want to contribute more from an artistic point of view to have fun. And then, you know, it'll kind of build from there. I think, I mean, I've already seen, you know, a shared knowledge community, everyone's contributing and everyone's using everyone's stuff. And uh, there's sort of agreements set up in place ahead of time. So people know what they're getting and how it works. So I think we're getting closer. Uh, I think I got to go soon, but I'm just wondering maybe we should we should have at least a, a, a weekly check-in like this. At least a weekly check-in. Yeah. Totally. And um, uh, I I want to create more content. Like I'm yeah I'm just setting up the first week. I'm starting this week with the intent the the month of this 28 day cycle is homecoming. I don't think that's backward. So. No, the other way. The other way worked. This way worked. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Flips it. There you go. It's backwards for me. Um. But I want to um. Talk about the systems because all the shows are going to be linked to the all the shows that I create are going to be linked to the info matrix, the all the the diagrams. So I would like to create um a dialogue, a kind of like a, a meta show, a show about the meta, the show about creating the shows and organizing consciousness into these, into the frameworks of the maps. And in that way, having a dialogue with you where we're, um, I want to get into walkie talkie video. So that's how I want to use Veeam. And so we're not having so much like live conversation and we're also not having like, um, we could have like, we can have some, some of it like one minute, like blocks that we send each other but a lot of it i want it to be like quicker conversations like like um i want the the back and forth to be more snappy and we can just submit that on our we can basically have a conversation through the week um and we could probably just do it on messenger try that that would be really interesting um i love this effect I, we can do some crazy. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do like Blair Witch style. Mm. So you know, like Blair Witch, super low budget. Yeah. But they but they made that the style. Yeah. And so it sold. So it's like the digital age, and you got all these effects. I want to just turn that into, you know, because you can look at it in a tacky way, but you can also look at it in like paint the aesthetic as what it is in a really cinematic way. Mm hmm. I'm really excited to hit that page. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's not quite green screen, but it's close and it's, uh, I like anything that's a bit creative, so. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go off. It was wonderful speaking with you, Jordan, and I look forward to our next chat. And maybe what we can do as a next step is send me, load something into Messenger that's like a, the beginning of the convo, and then I'll make something and send it back. And then we can begin a, a, a chat. Okay. Inside Messenger, just like you said. And then we can put that together as maybe a weekly, you know, why don't we do a weekly show of us chatting that way or something? Dig it. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. That's right, perfect. Okay. Much love to you, my brother. Great work. And uh, we'll be in touch soon. Talk to you soon. And I'll load this up. I'll load this up, okay? Up to where? Up in a, the Very Secret Plan YouTube and then pop it over on Facebook. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> Send me a link. Okay. Ah, cool. All right. Take okay. you soon. Goodbye. Okay,